My name's Kelly Henry, and I'm an alcoholic. <clears throat> My sobriety date is April 20th of 2001, and uh, I love Alcoholics Anonymous. I really do. And um, I'm truly a product of Alcoholics Anonymous. And um, I have a sponsor in AA, and, um, and I sponsor people in Alcoholics Anonymous, and I also have a home group. Uh, down in uh, in Lakeway, Texas, called the Lake Travis Serenity Group, and we had probably uh, maybe 10 or 15 folks from Lake Travis come up to this conference this year, which is really cool. So, um, you know, I, I I got sober in, in Long Beach, California, and and, and really really quickly, um, I'm going to be talking for about 30, 30, 45 minutes, and um, we're gonna we're gonna drill down on on steps one, two, and three, and and the way that I was sponsored in Alcoholics Anonymous and the way that I sponsor. And, um, but before that, you know, Donna brought up a, a lot of really um, good memories for me. I, I got sober in, in, uh, in Long Beach, California, um, the first time um, in 1997. Um, when I was 18 years old, I, I first ended up uh, at a place called uh, Charlie Street um, in, in Costa Mesa, California, where Cliff Roach came and gave a talk. And it was the first time that I heard the message of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, and that message was hope, you know, that message was hope. And uh, I was able to stay sober for, for a couple of years, uh, really active in AA. And, and then needless to say, about three years sober, um, the woman became my higher power. Um, the, the job became my higher power. And, and um, like an, another friend of mine from, from California, Leo Booth, you know, he, he told me that if, uh, if we forget where we come from, we just might go back. You know, and uh, and that's what happened. I, I had forgotten where I had come from, um, and I started drinking and, and doing what I do. And one more time, the state of California was running my life at 20 years old, and and um, so she brought back a lot of great memories and, and a lot of great people that raised me in Alcoholics Anonymous, where I got sober in in Southern California, and, and uh, my wife and I moved out to to Lakeway, Texas, about five years ago, and just got plugged into to a beautiful group. Um, and a lot of wonderful people on Alcoholics Anonymous. But um, to uh, to give you a, to give you an idea as far as where where I come from, you know, I bounced in and out of a lot of detoxes, um, um, Stanton detox, and uh, the Rock Center, and and jails. I, I started this vicious cycle of of institutions when I was 13 years old. I, I was I was already irretrievable, you know. And um, one of the one of the earliest and greatest uh, moments of, of, of my, uh, my alcoholism was uh, that powerlessness um, came when, you know, I would go up scounding for, for weeks at a time. And uh, I remember crawling into my house in the middle of the night after being gone for, for quite some time. And my, my mom was sitting there chain smoking in the kitchen like she'd always do when her son would go missing for, for days and weeks on end. And... Um, I remember walking into that kitchen, and, uh, and when she saw me, she just started pounding her fist on, on the kitchen counter, you know, um, asking me why. You know, why do you do this to your family? And uh, for the first time, one of the most honest things that I had ever said in my life to that point in time was, I don't know. I don't know why I chase alcohol at all costs, you know. And... Um, that that was my life at, at a really early age, and it wasn't until I until I sat with a sponsor in Alcoholics Anonymous who who spoon fed me the first 164 pages of the book um, and did the steps with me as we went through the book that I, I learned about this disease of, of alcoholism and how powerless I am um, over this disease. And and so um, with, with that being said, I, I just I think it's important for me to let y'all know where I come from, and, and um, I'm a hopeless alcoholic. And, uh, and I need Alcoholics Anonymous in my life, and I need, and I need drunks, you know. And um, Donna said it so beautifully where, um, first and foremost, um, Kelly needs a power. Uh, Kelly needs a power to, to, to not drink um, and not go crazy. And um, there's that one little sentence in, in the big book where it says that that is the main purpose um, of this book, is to enable me to find a power greater than myself, um, that will solve my problem. Um, and that's what I found here in, in Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, um, a God that's, that's solving all my problems. Um, you know, so I, I, I want to I dive into um, 
I, I was talking with, with somebody before before at, at dinner and um, really at the end of the day, right, there's, you know, we, we talk about principles in Alcoholics Anonymous and I, I was taught um, steps one, two, and three, uh, honesty, hope, and faith. And those are things that I have to carry into my life on a daily basis. Um, but first and most important for me was that, was that honesty. And um, I, I ended up getting sober this last time um, April 20th of, of 2001 in, in Soledad Penitentiary in, in Northern California. Um, one more time, the state of California was running my life because when I drink, I have no place in society whatsoever. I don't, I don't do you, you know. Um, I, and uh, I, was, uh, I was doing a, a, a two-year prison term, and, and, uh, and a gentleman that I used to run pretty, pretty hard with um, ended up on, on the same, on the exact same prison yard that I was on. And um, he had known that I had gotten sober in, in 1997 and that my life was, had gotten pretty good for, for some time. And he asked me, he said, he said, Kelly, what were you doing? You know, and uh, I said, I was going to meetings and I was reading this book and um, life was good. You know, li life was good. And, and keep in mind, I had no intention of, of getting sober at this time. I was just doing time. Um, but God put this person in my life. You know, he put this person in my life and he told me, he said, Kelly, I'm tired. You know, I'm tired too. And, and so in, in, in the least likely of places, right, in the least likely of places, um, Sean A., who actually ended up dying um, November of last year from this disease, um, he and I ended up reading the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous in Soledad, California, um, just one drunk talking to another and I had no intentions of, uh, of getting sober. And, and um, th those people from, you know, from Lake Travis know that everywhere I go, I have my little big book. Um, and I still have young eyes, so I could see, I could see this little book. Um, but, you know, this, um, th this book is, is incredibly important to me. You know, um, there's, uh, when, when, when things, um, when, when chaos uh, happens um, inside, they cannot take from you your spiritual literature. You know, and um, a big book of Alcoholics Anonymous is considered a spiritual piece of literature um, in the California correctional system. And so this, this book has everything. Um, it has my contacts and, and uh, regardless. Um, so Sean and I ended up studying the big book um, with color pencils and paper clips. We started reading the big book together and, and, and the fire for Alcoholics Anonymous was relit in me um, when I had absolutely no intention of getting sober. You know, and um, this book has been chopped up many times. It's been read over and over again. And every time I read it, I learn something new. But um, um, what, what an amazing experience. And, and we, would, uh, we would go to a meeting on Thursday night when we were allowed to, um, when, when everything was programming. And, and one of those early moments, um, you know, was when, was when Sean and I are sitting there um, at a facility with 5,500 men or so. And... Um, I think the most people that we had at that meeting on any given Thursday night was three, you know? And um, it was one of those moments where I, I, felt, I felt so incredibly fortunate um, to, to, to have the opportunity to even know what Alcoholics Anonymous is, you know? So, um, so uh, to, to fast forward just a little bit, I, 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 paroled, I paroled with a little bit over a year of sobriety. And I remember walking into the, to the 7 a.m. meeting um, the, the Marina Pacifica group at, at PCH and 2nd Street and um, where these, these old timers in, in that room, you know, um, knew me from, from when I first got sober. And, and I remember walking into that meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous and, and when I walked through those doors, I, I had that sense of ease and comfort that the big book talks about, right? When I walked into that meeting, I, I, I had that feeling like everything was going to be okay. Um, I had a shot, you know, and... Um, they welcomed me in with open arms for about 30 seconds, and, uh, and then, then, they, then they reminded me that I had to get busy in Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, and, um, and that, that's, that's really my, my step one um, in AA was that uh, I didn't have any more yeah buts, no more I knows. All I had was okay, you know, okay. Okay, I'll show up early. Okay, I'll be at your house on Wednesday night at 6 p.m. to read the book. You know, okay, I'll stay late and put away chairs. Okay, I'll go pick that guy up. Um, I finally got to a place in my life um, that I was just willing to do what y'all were telling me to do. Um, 
You know, and I think that's twofold for, for me. You know, um, not only did I not have the power to not drink, but it talks about the unmanageability. And, and it was a given that, that, that Kelly couldn't hold a job or pay his bills or maintain a relationship. That kind of came with, came with the package, right, of my alcoholism. But, um, you know, we were talking about this the other night. What I, what I think was really important for me was that um, I was going crazy, too. I was going crazy. And... Um, the unmanageability emotionally, spiritually, mentally, um, I was a complete mess. And um, for, for me and, and my alcoholism, that really good combination of, uh, of alcohol running my life, absolutely crazy and completely empty. Um, and not even, not, even not even a possibility of, of me to be a part of this society. Um, those factors drove me to Alcoholics Anonymous where I was finally ready just to say, okay. You know, and do what y'all told me to do, and and uh, you know, my my step work in in, in Alcoholics Anonymous, um, I, I've I've done more writing um, on step one than any other step, um, and I was just told that um, that it was important for me to put my step one in writing because that there will be a day, um, there will be a day when um, when I, I've I've come so far. I've come so far from where I was to where I'm at now that I'll forget where I come from. And I can pull that out, and it's my own writing. It's my story. You know, it's my, own, it's my story of alcoholism, so I don't forget where I come from. Um, and I've done that as far as my first step is concerned. You know, I've, I've written a lot as far as my, my experiences of uh, uncom uncomprehensible demoralization, how many times I made the supreme sacrifice, right? Um, like, like the big book talks about, the supreme sacrifice for king alcohol. Um, I, I put that stuff on paper so I don't forget where I come from. And uh, as, as far as my, my step two is concerned, it talks about that, um, you know, Kelly came to believe in a, in a power um, greater than himself that would restore me to sanity. And my, my experience of that was I first saw that in the members of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, for for me, um, when I when I came to meetings and I and I, I saw the the men and the women in Alcoholics Anonymous living it and not just talking about it, um, it started to resonate with me. You know, um, I, I hung on the coattails of these old timers and I just went where they went and did what they did. And I saw that they had successful careers and and happy marriages, but yet they were still incredibly active in Alcoholics Anonymous. And I had known that they had come where I'd come from. And so I started to believe that, hey, whatever they got going on, um, I'm going to believe in that as well. You know, um, it's that message of, of depth and weight that I, that I heard in AA um, that allowed me to come to believe that there's something greater than me that you all have found, and I'm just going to do what you do, you know, and go where you go. And that, that's, 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 my, that's my journey um, as far as my experience in these rooms of, of step two. Um, but it was really important for me when... Um, when, when doing the, the step work in AA, that, um, that I, ident I identified a God in Alcoholics Anonymous, whatever that may be. You know? And um, we, we were talking about this the other night as well, where I, I think it was such, a, such, a, um, such a, an important part in, in Alcoholics Anonymous when, when Abby was, was sitting, Abby was trying to 12-step Bill Wilson. You know? And Abby um, and made this really important comment, and you know it's important when it's in squiggly. Right? <laughs> Anytime anything's in squiggly writing in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, you know it's really important. And he said, um, Abby said to God, you know, Abby said to Bill, he said, why don't you choose um, your own conception of God? You know, and, uh, and I think that was a pretty profound statement, especially from where, where Abby was coming from. And, and um, you know, that, that's also my experience in Alcoholics Anonymous, that... Uh, my God was, was very different at step two than, than, than what it is today, you know. Um, but I, I did have to, my experience was that I, I had to identify something um, at step two, um, a power greater than Kelly, that there was a God and it wasn't me, you know. And um, that, was, that was really important. And, uh, you know, as far as uh, my, my step three is concerned, um, I, I, was, I was taught that step three is really simple, um, that I pray for my knees every single morning, the third step prayer, and I immediately get into doing a four-step inventory. Um, and that, that's the action in Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, you know, they, 
I can't, he can, I'm going to let him, and I need to immediately get into doing an inventory in Alcoholics Anonymous. And that's the way I was taught. You know, that, that's what I was taught here that time. I needed to get busy. And, and thank, thank goodness for those old-timers that were willing to, um, that, were, uh, that were willing to hurt my feelings, you know. Um, they, they were willing to tell me the truth um, when I didn't want to hear it, when I didn't want to hear it, you know. So um, as far as um, steps one, two, and three is concerned, in all honesty, I, I, I feel like I can step away from the podium letting you know that that's my experience in Alcoholics Anonymous and what I do. Um, but um, when it's all said and done, I know that I have to try and live the, these principles in my life on a daily basis. And, um, and we hear about these principles a lot in our, in our meetings. And, and in, in steps one, two, and three, again, I was taught that it's honesty, step one. Uh, step two is hope. Uh, and step three is faith. Um, faith that the steps in Alcoholics Anonymous are going to show me this God in my life that will allow me to not drink and grow up in Alcoholics Anonymous, you know. Um, somebody like me doesn't, doesn't come from where I come from to where I'm at now, you know. Um, I, I, I paroled uh, from, from Soledad and, and went in an interview with a company two weeks. Two weeks I was at home, and I was just doing what my sponsor told me to do, Fred Peters in, in, in Long Beach, California, and, and uh, I'm still with that same employer, you know. Um, a person that came to you in Alcoholics Anonymous with no education, no life skills, and a prison number. And, um, and I was done. And I was just willing to say, okay. And uh, I'm still employed by that, by that same company this very day. Um, I have a beautiful wife in, in Alcoholics Anonymous who sponsors women and, and is incredibly involved. I don't know how somebody like me doesn't come from where I was to where I'm at without without doing steps one, two, and three out of the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, you know. Um, so with that, my name's Kelly Henry, and I'm an alcoholic. Thanks.